What is up guys, welcome to a brand new video. Today we're checking out the stuff in the next patch 6.19. Honestly, it's kind of just a patch of nerfs, so Riot are just going ham. The first thing I just wanted to say was we hit 400,000 subs a few weeks ago, so thank you for that. I've been prepping a big giveaway though, so I've got at least $200 of RP split between people to give away, probably more. Four Steel Series products, you can choose between a mouse, headset, or keyboard if you win, and also four boxes of Quest Nutrition Bars, which are like the healthy fitness snack bars. To enter, there is a link down below. I've kept it super simple and I say at least $200 because I'll probably give away more but I'm going to talk about that more at the end of this video and explain it in the description. So there are timestamps for all of these down below if you want to skip stuff, the nerfs, buffs, who are getting better this patch, who to watch out for, the best in each role and more about the giveaway. Remember this patch is probably going to be tomorrow night or the day after but let's start with the nerfs to start with. Soraka is still getting boned by Riot but not quite as hard. Rank 1 is going to be 8 seconds now instead of 4 so that's actually still double the old one then it goes down a bit but still like five seconds rank three instead of three seconds it actually adds up quite a lot to be honest I'm not gonna pretend to be sad or anything like in my opinion she's broken right now like I actually ban her in every single game I do not want to play against her she kind of cancels out like any aggression gives her AD carry a free lane just no fun and it's so hard to play against I think this is gonna screw her over quite a bit and there's no real way around it either like sometimes you can swap to max another skill but in my opinion you have to max your W now to get that cooldown lower like you could have maxed your Q right for like more poke and like this self heal and stuff but like if you're left with an eight second cooldown heal that is so high she'll still be okay but in lane like much much worse i think and that's where she's supposed to shut the enemy down so i guess most people are probably just going to go and play sona now there are actually a few mid lane nerfs that are going to make a difference as well i think it's kind of weird because mid lane hasn't been hit that much for months now and all of a sudden three big ones in the same patch so the three champions are anivia aurelian soul and cassiopeia now at the moment the icy and chilling like mini rework thing for anivia has been removed so that's not there anymore more. It's much more of a simple nerf, lowering the damage on her E by 5 to 25, rank 1 to 5. This is going to hurt a little bit, but I still think she's going to be decent. Like, the mini rework change was something I really wanted to see, but, you know, like, I guess it would actually balance her around skill, and we all know Riot want to make League a casual game. Maybe that's a bit harsh, but, like, you'd have to put in a good amount of time into her to get the chilling stuff down and actually, like, work in your favor, and when she did, she'd be just as good as she is now. It is kind of a shame, but she'll be weaker than she is now. Nothing huge, though, to worry about if you still want to play her. To be honest, most of these small changes actually feel bigger when another champion that goes against them is buffed. So it's like a nerf to one champ, right, and a buff to another, which makes a bigger difference without being obvious, but there aren't any of these buffs this patch. Anyway, next one is a lot harsher. Aurelian Soul is a weird champ, right? I had one that intentionally fed, was like 2 and 11, but he still did loads of damage and killed people. A few games later, I had one who was fed as balls, but late game, he did like no damage. Like, it's a lot about skill, I think. Anyway, his passive damage is up because his W damage is down. Legit, though, his W damage is half of what it used to be, plus it costs more mana per second now. His E also can't be used to escape in combat either anymore, so late game this is technically a buff, but it's a nerf really for most of the game. It's kind of unlucky for Aurelian players really, because the ones in Master and Challenger and High Diamond are wrecking people right now, so that's probably why he's getting nerfed. He's like a god champ at high low, so he gets nerfed. For lower ranks though, even when he's reasonably balanced down there. Unless you roam like a madman now, I don't really see a huge reason why you'd play him over other champions who just kind of more. The final mid lane nerf though is to Cassiopeia, probably about the Anivia level on the scale I guess. A heal is now based on level, not on rank. So before you could get a 25 heal at rank 5, which is level 9. Now even at level 18, it's only going to be 22. You spam this big time, like my email gets spams with offers to put my logo on socks and stuff. Like whacking your E key, that's like the level of spam. The point is, like having around half the heal it would have at level 9, like that kind of sucks because you're using it so often. Honestly, her damage is very high anyway way so I doubt it matters too much. I actually like to think she's kind of similar to Karthus in a way now. Like met early game I guess but has some damage still. She just keeps getting stronger as the game goes on though. It's another case that she's pretty busted at high low top lane especially too by the way. Koreans have a massive hard on for Cassio even if we don't as much over here. This is probably one way you're going to think it's a bit weird but because I stalk so many different regions I see her in the top 5 win rates a ton. Not as much though in NA or EU for some reason. So the last nerf that I think might make any difference is to Twitch so the attack speed bonus on his Q has been lowered at higher ranks. It's not really going to affect his early game at all. You max his second and it's still the same rank one as it is now. Late game it's going to hurt a little bit. You won't kill people as fast but I mean like you overkill people so often anyway. So is it really going to be an issue? Twitch's late game is insane and that's actually what's leading him to constantly have a top 5 win rate over the past few patches. So we're going to get into what those nerfs actually mean in a second but let's go over the two buffs I think actually might mean something and this is a bit of a stretch. Corky is getting his AD growth stat buffed which is kind of nice. 
Price is strange, but Corky has been played a lot more recently, especially in Korea. The roaming with the package seems to be a big thing. His mid game damage is actually still insane, and like most people have forgotten about it, I guess. Like, yes, like his late game sucks ass now, but I think if you can snowball early to mid, you'll be fine. It's not really enough to make him like super popular again, but at least he's getting a little bit of love, and like I think you can win more games with him now if you actually want to play him. The other one is to Mundo. The weird buff that gave his Q like Grievous Wounds, the thing that cuts the healing reduction, has been cut out, so that's like not there anymore, which is no real surprise, I guess. His E though is getting buffed, so the cooldown is down and the AD is going up as well. Now this is not a huge thing, but I think Mundo might suit this kind of meta well anyway, so it's like a little push in the right direction. Basically, he can absorb loads of cooldowns from mid laners or cooldown based champions, which is what we're seeing a lot more of now. We want like bigger front lines against these bursty champions who can absorb, and then we also want them to protect our hyper carry champions. So he's good against like most teams, but he's good with most teams as well. I've seen a bit more of him recently. He's done kind of well, and like yes, healing reduction. I guess it's easier to come by now. It's cheaper. It's easier to build. It does counter him, but he's still an awesome tank and decent mid game for just being like unkillable. So we're actually going to go on to what these nerfs mean in 619. So these mid laners are all ones who have good late games, but are kind of still strong early as well. So we have kind of two options really. The first one is we pick champions who snowball or like early game champions. They're probably going to be a bit better, like LeBlanc for example. Like might be a bit of a less risky pick and hopefully be able to do a bit more now. Or what we can do is we can pick champions that do the same job, but they'll be naturally better now. So like Syndra and Oriana are two examples that I think might do a lot better this patch. Oriana is great protecting people like other carry champions and still providing loads of damage late game as well. Like for a Jinx, for example, she can shield the Jinx, she can keep her alive, but she's actually still a threat as well. If Jinx dies for some reason, you can still carry the fight. Syndra is the other side of things, I guess. So like strong early and strong later as well. And if these champions are getting nerfed, who basically do the same job, then that naturally is going to make her a better pick. I would expect Syndra to really make an impact this patch and be a lot more popular and a lot better. Oriana might be good for more passive laners and LeBlanc is already popular, but just might have an easier time, I guess, in these matchups now. With Soraka getting pretty gutted this patch, it opens up the lane a lot more, I think. So again, kind of two different ways. The other pussy support, so you know, like sit behind the AD and play all scared and just like defensive ones, they'll be better. Sona, Janna, Nami in a way, I guess, will be able to keep up with Soraka more. Normally, Soraka just wins a sustained war and there isn't much you can do, to be honest. I don't think it's as bad now. And once you get out of the lane phase, like these other champions start to shine and do way more too overall. So I expect their win rates to jump up a bit, kind of stealing the win rate from Soraka players. Aggressive supports as well are going to be better, more rewarding now and easier to punish this racket in the lane phase. If she can only heal once every 8 seconds, then you can legit focus the enemy AD. You can burst through those heals, especially with an ignite to block that first heal. Like Nautilus is one I would watch, Brand as well for a mage version. These guys have a lot of kill pressure, damage and crowd control, which were good against Soraka anyway. So we're taking lanes that were like decent against her and now just speed like better now. And in theory, they could kill her and like snowball quite hard or at least shut her down. Okay, so let's go over champions to watch out for in each role now. From the last patch, we talked about Kennen and Jace. They're still doing really well, especially Kennen right now. This guy is such a good carry champion and his damage is insane. For top lane, we're going to look at Wukong. So really high damage and roam potential, good laning and a good team fight as well. I got absolutely wrecked by one of these on the stream. Like one shot me every single fight. I think once you learn his damage, there are a lot of opportunities you wouldn't normally see as well, but like he just carries so hard. For the jungle, Shaco is still being a complete pain in my ass right now. Damage is back and nobody does more than him really. Like one of the few champions who can snowball early and actually just keep punishing people over and over. The thing is, it's not like all or nothing with Shaco though. Like he can still be useful late game as an assassin or a split pusher. So you don't have to get ahead early to be useful. For mid, I think Zillion might come back up more now. In every region, he has a decent win rate at the moment. And a big part is how much damage we're seeing in the rest of the picks. Shaco, for example, could go in, right? Blow someone up, just get revived and then do it again or jump away. And Jinx, like for example, could never die and just kill everyone. Simple, but very effective this patch. For AD carry, it's going to be Misfortune. This girl is going to pop off this patch and crush people. She has dominated 618 and there's no reason for her to stop right now either. For support, it is actually going to be Nautilus. So we mentioned this before, but aggressive supports are better and also an amazing lane with Misfortune. So basically you Q into passive into ult, locked in place for ages and Misfortune ultimate over the top. It is disgusting. So those are the ones to watch out for, but what about the best in this patch or the best to start 619 with? For the top lane, Riven, I think is still crapping on everyone and it's kind of scary that she's becoming more and more popular, but her win rate is also going up as well. For the jungle, we have Graves for damage and Zac as a tank. Now, Graves' burst is off the charts and he's getting a lot better, I think. Like, all of these carry junglers are getting nerfed and he's still around and kind of relatively nerf-free. Zac is kind of the other side of the coin, I guess, if you want to tank. He still does loads of damage, actually, but you have insane long-range ganks and you're also super tanky. Just a more versatile
profile pick, I guess, and fits in any team comp. Ari is the safest choice for the mid lane. Like, a lot has changed, but she's still very good and, like, in a very good spot and will be strong to kick off 619. Misfortune, I just said, dominated 618 and is just so strong right now. Like, she shreds towers with her new passive, like, it applying full damage to it. The love tap, the Q burst is nuts. Her ultimate damage is way too high. She's very, very good right now. Finally, for support, Sona is replacing Srag here, basically. You can heal kind of as well as her in lane, I think, now. And in team fights, she becomes amazing with her aura spam and ultimate. Okay, so that wraps up the video, but let me just explain this giveaway stuff. So there are going to be four Steel Series winners, and you can pick between a rival 100 mouse, a Siberia 200, or an Apex 350 keyboard. So you can pick whichever one you want. There are going to be four boxes of quest bars for one person, and the RP split between a bunch of people. Normally, I get about 20,000 new subs a month, so I thought $200 was a good place to start, but I want to go hard the next 30 days and see how far I can push it. Basically, like taking you guys along with me. So if I work really hard and I can get 30,000 new subs, then I'll up it to $300. 40k, then $400, 50k, $500. If I got 100k, I'd give away $1,000. This is mainly for me, to be honest. It doesn't really like concern you guys that much. It's a thank you to you guys for subscribing and watching my content. If you want to share this, then you can, but don't get bots or anything stupid like that. I just thought this would be a cool idea to give some more away, and it's mainly for me as motivation. Like, it's motivation for me to work really hard and try and grow my channel and like taking you guys along with me, I guess. It doesn't really concern you guys too much. Anyway, the link is down below to enter for all of that. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you guys for watching, but for now, I'll leave you with the robots.